So first, my hope is that uh, when uh, you know objective reporters talk about uh, what we're spending, that you do the uh, what I believe makes it a complete story, which is to put it in context and also talk about what we're saving. Uh, so far, the 10-year financial plan effort has already saved tens of millions of dollars by helping us do complex pension and health care reform, changes to our vehicle fleet, and much more. Uh, these are very difficult initiatives that I'm pushing forward to prevent uh, serious fiscal uh, threats from becoming a reality. And my goal is to run the city more like a business, and every major company in America and across the world hires outside independent experts to figure out new ways to cut costs, uh, to find efficiencies, and to save money. We've done the same thing. I don't want to end up uh, like, unfortunately, uh, too many cities uh, because we don't have experts that are helping us, um, you know, right the ship. Um, the, the consultants uh, originally were hired to help uh, create the 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. um, why are they still needed now that the plan has been created? I'll turn it over to Harry for that. Good, good morning. Uh, pretty much, we, we knew all along that we were going to want to continue their, their services and support as it relates to the implementation phase of the project. What this amendment to the contract does, it basically extends them for another year and makes them available to us as needed uh, in terms of providing uh, various sorts of analytical support and that we're still doing pension reform. Clearly, as we go through that legislative process and we have discussions with unions and so forth, people are going to want us to basically consider other options. Mm -hmm. So basically, we don't, we wouldn't necessarily have those in-house actuarial services. So something like that would be typical of what we would utilize them for. Uh, if we want to do something, particularly on the capital uh, program side of the house, where we would not necessarily have that in-house expertise because we, not ne we should not necessarily have it because it's a one-time, short-term type of an assignment. I'd like to ask about uh, another financial matter. Over a year ago, the uh, state of Maryland sent the city a letter that said, uh, you, we have, we, we've documented $1.5 million worth of property tax credits that were given improperly to people. Um, please, please collect them. And, and those letters have not been out for over a year. So the city has missed out on over, over a million dollars. What? Why haven't, why haven't the city sent out letters to collect those funds? Okay, first of all, if I may, yeah, Madam yeah. Mayor, first of all, uh, based on advice we received from the city's law department, the, you know, although uh, those errors were identified, the city doesn't have the ability legally to go back and rebuild those individuals in that they've already paid what they were billed. Uh, there's some particular special legal terminology that's, <clears throat> that's applied here. However, as, uh, as the mayor has stated on previous occasions, uh, we've been working very closely with SDAT. Uh, we've basically, we've been cleaning up all of the historic tax credit information, and uh, we believe uh, we've, we've done a pretty thorough job of that. So the bills that have gone out and that will continue to go out will reflect what they should reflect, and we are collecting. So you can't collect that tax, that tax revenue? There's a legal, there's a legal okay. impediment that states that They've been billed, uh, they've paid the, what they were billed, so therefore we, we don't have the ability legally to uh, rebuild them. But moving forward, prospectively, we, you know, with the corrections that have been made, you know, everything's been put in order. Could you provide me with the legal analysis or whatever that says that? Yeah. Uh, we can provide you with something, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Take care, have a great day.